But that was years ago I'd better change my wandering ways I know I've seen my Always pursue your dreams and, and pursue them as much as you can and don't let people knock you down about Lord, what a price I've had to pay And other storms of life are washing me away I'd better change my wandering ways I know I've seen my better days Always getting high when I get low But I left my soul out in the rain Lord, what a price I've had to pay and other storms of life are wasting me away. Yes, the storms of life are wasting me away. Please sit down, everyone. Thank you all for coming. It's, it's such a wonderful tribute to see so many, so many people who loved Henry. Um, thank you especially to Marge and, and to all of Henry's family for asking me to take part. Um, Henry was always so willing to help out anyone and everyone he could, and it's just an honor for me to be able to take my part in working for him today. My name is Phyllis Dupuis. Most of you know me, but if you don't, I am one of Henry's many cousins. Um, my mom was my Uncle George's sister, so my mom was Henry's dad's sister. I'm going to start by reading to you from the book of John, John's Gospel, chapter um, 14. Happens to be my favorite part of the Bible, so I like to read it every chance I get. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is Jesus talking to his disciples shortly before the crucifixion. He had told them he was gonna be leaving they had no idea what really was in store. In my father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me so that where I am, there you will be also. You know the way to the place that I'm going Thomas said unto him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way to get there? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but through me. If you really know me, you also would know that my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us this father. And it will be, that will be enough for us if we could just see him. Jesus replied, have I been so long a time with you and yet you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the father. So how do you say then, show us the father? Don't you believe that I am in the father and the father in me? The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father who dwells in me. He does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. 
and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. When Marge asked me to help lead this service today, I just thought, oh boy, what in the world am I going to say? There's so much. But I remembered a poem that I'd heard not all that long ago, in the spring maybe. I think it was just shortly after the time in April when Henry was, it was just so obvious at that point that he was not going to be with us for much longer. He was getting so tired. And I heard this poem and I thought, I have to remember that. And so I looked it up, good old Google, um, and I'd like to share it with you today because it really speaks of, of the fight that Henry led and, and his um, determination to succeed in that fight. This poem is called Invictus. It's written by William Henley, who was a poet in the Victorian times. In fact, he wrote it while he was in hospital. If you could imagine Victorian times hospital, they weren't wonderful places. And he was being treated for tuberculosis of the bone, which would not be a pleasant illness to be carrying with you. So it's called Invictus, which means, Invictus itself means unconquerable or undefeated. And I think it speaks to the way things went with our beloved Henry. And I'm sorry, guys, I can't call him Hank. I just can't. I knew him all his growing up years, all our growing up years as Henry, and that just sticks. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my inconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the quiet of the grave, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Marge, I'll call you now with your memories, if you will. Welcome, everybody. Shortly after our relationship started, Hank bought me this little ornament that states we've only just begun. I will treasure this precious gift of our love and life together. Hank, my husband and loving partner for almost 23 years, I will miss you, and this is just the start of my journey alone. I will miss holding hands, sitting in our wingback recliners drinking our morning coffee, playing ball with the dogs, your crazy jokes, talking about our daily plans and what's in the news. I will miss our long talks together and watching Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy with you. I will miss your arms around me and our strong bond. The sound of your laughter will re remain with me forever. Hank had a great love for our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Great-grandpa was so proud to cuddle our newest member to our family, great-grandson, Chet. He had a positive attitude about life, 
was loving and caring and had a never-ending sense of humor. He was a very dedicated to our family, friends, and work. He was a compassionate towards others and always offered his musical talents for benefits, dances. Hank enjoyed our trip to Nova Scotia with Cliff and Aldine and embracing the history of the East Coast. We took several trips into BC and got to enjoy swimming and boating with Kelly, Paula, Vonda, and grandkids. I think I liked that part better than Hank, though. He liked the quadding. Many weekends were spent in the Kakwa, Cutbank, and Grand Cache areas camping and quadding with family and friends and enjoying a beer around the campfire. Once again, that was Hank enjoying the beer. There was always a contest when quadding as to who would get through the deepest mud puddle. Hank loved the chance to pull out a stuck cowie, Kelly's for sure, but not before pictures were taken. He enjoyed watching our grandchildren and all their activities and spending time with them. When someone needed a babysitter, even if I said no, I couldn't do it, Hank always was available, and I, at that point I had to be available. He was the go-to guy to get anything fixed and the jack of all trades. Vonda would phone her dad and describe the noise her vehicle was making and Hank would know what was wrong with it every time. He was very good at giving a hand to fix a vehicle or for someone or for, with home renovations. He was a great singer, songwriter, producer, and performer. He produced two CDs. The first was My Country Way with cover songs. The second CD was Raging River with his original music. When he sent that information to Vonda the first time, he called it Ragging River. He loved to sit at his desk to write songs and would strum on his guitar, his guitar until he would get the lyrics just right. He was currently working with Barry to produce a third CD called Hank McDermott, Outlaws, Outlaws Trains and Lovers. He thoroughly enjoyed his time with Barry working on the project. One of his favorite things was to be on stage and to perform as part of the Night Riders. He loved that part of his life. Hank also wrote the theme song for the first act of the play, Chasing the Dream, in honor of Grand Prairie's 100th anniversary two years ago. Later in the Herald Tribune, Savannah Walling, an artistic director from Vancouver, stated, some things about the performance, but her personal highlights, she stated, included Hank McDermott's music. That statement touched my husband's heart very much. He was so proud of his accomplishments. One of Dylan's best memories about Grandpa was making pancakes in the cast iron frying pan over the open fire at Kakwa. It started to rain and Kelly had an, had an umbrella held over Grandpa's head, but occasionally a raindrop or two would hit the pancake and create little holes, making the pancake look like it had craters in the, like it, the moon does. Dylan and the girls loved Grandpa best. Best, he made the best pancakes. Danica stayed with us for about five weeks at the end of her grade 10 year before she moved to Spirit River. And any time Grandpa went outside to do some projects, she says to me, why is it every time Grandpa goes outside, these old men show up? They were the neighborhood gentlemen coming for a beer. <laughs> One of Vonda's memories was years ago when the family were all traveling back from Jasper on the forestry trunk road and all the kids had been acting up. Her dad had just about had enough. He piped up and said, one more peep and you're all walking. Well, Vonda, she was seven or eight years old, and the smart ass that her ra father raised her to be, waited a second and said, beep. <laughs> her dad slammed on the brakes and kicked Kelly and Vonda out of the truck. <laughs> Not sure why. They both stood in the middle of the gravel road, stunned, watching their parents along with Mark and Barry drive away. Kelly was mad at her for getting them in trouble, and Vonda started to cry as they were walking towards home. 
In the bushes, they heard growling and a rustling of leaves. By now, they were both scared to death and could hardly breathe. Next thing we know, you know, her dad and Mark popped out of the bush, growling and pretending to be bears. Her dad was laughing so hard that he could hardly, barely contain himself. As scared as Vonda was, she was also relieved. Her dad had put his hand on her head, messed her hair, and said, now get in the truck and let's go home. Not a word was said, and her dad didn't have to worry about them not listening to him. That was a valuable lesson for Londa, Vonda because she understood what he said and he had followed through with what he meant. One of Connie's favorite memories was, camping, was a camping trip that her and her husband made with Hank and our, our family and friends. Um, Hank and his two-wheel drive, he figured he could do everything a four-wheel drive could do. He always claimed that it could go anywhere. So we were south of Grand Prairie in the bush. Kelly, his beloved son, bet his dad $20 to, and spun up a muddy hill in, with his four-wheel drive and said, there, Dad, let me see your truck do that. Well, everybody that knows Hank, the challenge is on. After trying a couple of times, Hank backed up several times, and then he finally backed up the third time, accidentally running over the power saw in the process. He gunned it and made it to the, up the hill. Can't, Hank got out of the truck and said, there you go, I made it. Kelly was the first to reply, yeah, Dad, but you, you used the chainsaw for traction. We all laughed our butts off at that. Kelly paid his dad the $20, but the new blade for the, the chainsaw cost us $29.95. <laughs> Some of Allison's favorite times with Grandpa were when the kids would come over when they were younger, bring their bikes, and go riding around the block to the park. She also loves the camping and quadding with Grandpa, and I think all the grandkids loved that because they all could have stories that they chose not to remind me of. Even just sitting around the campfire with his, his grandpa was always entertaining, bugging him about his bomb, ba deer. That was Allie's. He loved so much. Basically, anything involving quadding, camping, and music in my life has been greatly impacted by grandpa. Allie's comments. A few years back, we were camping at Big Mountain, and it was around 10 o'clock in the evening. Hank was tired and went to the trailer to shower and go to bed. It was a warm evening, so only the screen door was, open, was needed. Paula and I were busy placing quads around the tent to protect Dylan, Josh, and the family dog Jordan from the bears, while Tiara and Vonda were having a drink around the campfire. The guys, Kelly, Daryl, and Mike, were sneaking into the trailer. Kelly turned off the water pump, and the three sat quietly. Hank was ready to shower and opened the bathroom door to step out to turn on the pump. At that moment, Daryl turned on the million-watt flashlight. <laughs> After much cursing and swearing from Hank, and the bellows of laughter from the guys, Tiara and Vonda were privy to the full Monty. <laughs> or should I say the full Hank? <laughs> Paula says that when Hank, Paula said that's when Hank really started to have heart problems. <laughs> and that's, this story has been relived many times at Hank's expense. Connie remembers when she was a child, Hank claimed he could start water on fire. He took her down to the creek on the farm and poured gasoline on the water and lit it. She was very impressed with his abilities to make water burn. When Vonda first started to perform on stage, she was very nervous at singing and playing. Her father said that people weren't there to see her nerves but to hear her perform. He said, do you think people came to see Johnny Cash's nerves or to hear him sing? As time passed, her dad really helped her get over her nerves, and she's very comfortable on stage now. Years ago, Paula had trouble with her sewer line. 
Kelly was working out of town. Being she was home with three little children, she had to call her father-in-law for help. Hank had to lower Paula into the sewer by, by tying her to a Made in China extension cord. I'm not sure why they didn't have any ropes around, but that's what they used, seriously, so she could be, could be lowered down to re-glue the outlet pipe. She certainly put a lot of faith in her father-in-law. <laughs> Kelly remembers after playing music with him and his dad years ago, they would stop at the original Boston Pizza and Hank would go in and come out rather quickly with a pizza for them to eat on the way home. There was a window through the, to the kitchen and Hank could see all the pizzas that were ready for pickup. As there was always names on those orders, Hank would just look for a name and he would say he was that fella, whether it be Dave or Jim. <laughs> yes, and he paid for the pizza and, and, and left. So <laughs> Kelly never knew what kind of pizza they were going to have. And at that time, Ken George owned the, the pizza place and he'd have to deal with an upset cu customer any time Hank had a gig to play. So once Ken realized it was Hank, he always had an extra large Hawaiian pizza ready for Hank with Hank's name on it. So he didn't have to eat someone else's and Kelly wasn't in for some surprise at two o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna read a couple of comments from Facebook. The first one, and I just met this lady coming in today, Lynn Owies. Sympathy message to Vonda reads, my sincere sympathy to you and your family. I will always remember your dad playing for our wedding dance 49 years ago this November. And thank, and thank the good, good Lord, his legacy will live on through all of you. He's been playing music a long time. Ray Lynn mentioned, said, today has been the hardest day of my life. I had to say goodbye to the man who was more than a stepdad. You've, you've been there for me since I was a little shithead and did everything in the world for me and my family. Your chuckles, silly jokes, lending hand, singing in tight hugs will never be forgotten. We love you, rest in peace and sing and sing your heart out up there like you did for so many down here. Sue's comment was, the fall colors on the North Drive were absolutely stunning tonight, but it was the sunset that warmed my heart. It made me think of the two beautiful souls, the cousins that have been reunited in heaven and their blended voices have painted a symphony in the sky. Always loved, but never forgotten. Vonda's comment on Facebook, the morning after her dad passed away. To dad, I awoke up with one of your songs in my head today. It was so loud in my mind that I thought I was that I thought it was because you really wanted me to hear it and listen to what you have to say in it. It's the fighting man. And I know it was written about grandpa, but it also portrays the last few years of your battle with cancer. I'm waiting for your name. I'm waiting for your name to come up on my phone to ask me how I'm doing and what am I up to and tell me the latest things that are happening in the news today. Then you'll play me your latest song you've been working on over the phone. I want to sing with you one more time. I want to hear your soothing voice. Flowers and food have started to fill our homes from people who are paying their respects to you. And as we all are sitting in your house, I'm expecting you to come around the corner and sneak a snack and tell a joke to whoever you're standing closest to. I, will always call you for, I would always call you for advice on everything and you would mostly always have an answer for me. If you didn't, you'd always think about it and call me back. I, appreciate, I appreciated you more than you know. 
missing you doesn't even come close to how I feel about you right now. You will always be in my heart and soul, and you will always be a voice in my head when I need direction. Rest easy, Dad, and I love you. My parting words to my dear husband. I waited a long time for you to come into my life, and you've left me far too soon. I will always cherish our love and commitment to each other, and you will always be in my heart. I love you so much. And I, I had Hankisms, as we call it with Hank, in this that I took it out. Then I had to scribble a couple of down, so I'm not sure if I can even see it to read it. Hank had a couple of things he would say, especially if his sisters didn't call him often enough, or his son. He would phone them and say, just wondering if your fingers are broken, because that was telling them they would have been pretty late in giving him a phone call. And, okay, I think Kelly needs to do this one, and you know. Nope. Please. Which one? There's a, there's a few sayings that, that he's made, thing. but there's a few things when Dad wasn't really happy with you. You guys knew it, because you can take a good look at my ASS. Because it's the last, hair. yeah, it's because it's the last time you're going to see it. Yeah. And he sometimes met it unless he was hungry again. Well, that's true. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, it wasn't a surprise. <clears throat> the battle with cancer is never easy. Um, but Dad, when I tell people how long he's been fighting, they go, wow, he's been fighting a long time. So, sorry, my name's Kelly. If for those of you that don't know me, son of Hank McDermott. My father lived. This morning I got up at, what was it, Paula, four o'clock this morning. Didn't sleep much. Maybe some, some of you guys had that same thing going on. I know some of my kids, they've been struggling. <clears throat> if I fall down, I'll get back up. And I may, so please forgive me if I do. I'm not going to go on about who he was or the guys. You, you guys know him in so many different ways with so many different memories. He touched the hearts of many, but I guess that's kind of why you're here today. I'm only going to say for me, he is the perfect brother. I mean, at one time when we played in the band, people thought we were brothers. I was tall and ugly, and, and he was, uh, looked young and youthful underneath that cowboy hat. He's a perfect brother, friend, father, and grandpa to my children and great-grandpa. Just starting to get to know. I mean, time, right? We don't have enough time. Dad sang his songs his way. As some of the people who played with him will understand that comment, to some of those, they didn't know any better. It was just music and it was darn good. Dad built things certain ways because he knew some things. And Dad, th Dad just done things his way. Said he had a good life. I talked to him by his bedside. He had a good life with his children, grandchildren, and just getting to know his great-grandchild. And his rock, as of late, his loving wife, Marge. His journey, he said, 
he wouldn't change a thing except one. He said he would have liked to do more with his music. I have to agree with that. He just ran out of time, as we all do. We got too damn busy. So on this day, he requested that we do a celebration of life. Um, in his honor, cherish the life and times we had with Hank rather than mourning the loss of such a gifted soul. I'm glad and fortunate I got to spend 51 years with my father. What a gift. Who I believe lived a great life, surrounded by great friends, doing crazy and cool things. With all the love of his family, it was perfect. I believe life is not about worrying about all the big things like he did, or he, like he believes that as well. He, he also believed, believed that it's about the million little moments with others. Those memories sometimes didn't quite work out as well as they expected them to. Like when he'd give you a big hug and then on the way out he'd lick your face. <laughs> For those of you that had that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Somehow he always managed to lift your spirit though. That's what I always cherished about him. Those little Hank moments that made you laugh, made you cry, made you howl at the moon. They were perfect. His music was the vehicle to your very hearts and your very soul. Love you, Papa, always and forever. So in that spirit, today we sing. We're going to have some music for you, Dad. As you requested, we're going to have a celebration of life. So if you guys don't mind, we're going to play some music. Please feel free to sing out loud. He's watching you. He can hear you now. Today we sing for Hank. Hank has sung on earth no more. Today we're going to sing for Hank, okay? How many of you guys want to come up and sing? I'll get Auntie to roll up here too with... I need some help from the sisters. I call them the Pointer Sisters. This is Lillian Pronto and my sister Vonda. He always loved the one hymn, How Great Thou Art. So he wanted to do it, but the only way he wanted me to do it was kind of Elvis style. So this is, this is what we got. Oh, Lord, my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the world's thy hands made uh, Then see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe displayed Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul. Hey. 
Gem. <laughs> no, you're a gem. She's always been a gem. On the day my father passed, I was scrambling because he's a songwriter, he's a performer, he's a he's a he's a Hank. And I thought to myself, I just wandered around the house in the middle of the night because he can't sleep. Um, wrote a bit of a song, and I think you guys, some of you might have seen it on Facebook, but they asked me if I would sing that here today. It's called The Other Side. I thought I saw you yesterday walking down the street. Sun was shining in my eyes and I could hardly see. You smiled and you waved to me. Was it all a dream? Felt so real I couldn't tell. I guess it must have been. Well, you know I still love you. I guess I always will. I wish that I could hold you in my arms until I'll see you again. On the other side On the other side Yes, you still watch over me Dropping in from time to time Wish you could stay a while Have a glass of wine Just in case you're wondering How I'm really doing yeah, I'm getting by. I hope I see you soon. Well, you know I still love you. I guess I always will. I wish that I could hold you in my arms until I see you again. On the other side. I could hold you in my arms until I see you again on the other side, on the other side, on the other side.
now it's only fair that we play songs that you guys heard him sing through the years. When I was a kid, I started playing drums. Actually, I had a couple of milk pails. You guys remember them stereo systems where you lift the lid and you had the record player and then the eight track cassettes or eight tracks? You had to put a matchstick in the one side to keep the darn thing from, and the radio and feel cool. But I had this side of the, the arms. I think I used mom's wooden spoons. Sorry for the wooden spoons, mom. A couple milk pills. That's how I learned how to play drums because I knew that that's, if dad played music, I, w I wanted to do that. So I started doing that, but then when I started playing music, I got playing music with dad. And the first songs I remember him ever singing, his first song of the night was Love me tender Love me sweet Never Let me go you have made my life complete And I love you so Love me tender Love me long All my dreams fulfill For my daughter I love you And and I always will. And then he grew a little bit and they got this band that's called Harry and Joe Kogonar. And the first song they used to play all the time is Don't Be Angry. Don't be angry with me, darling, if I fail to understand all your little whims and wishes all the time. Just remember that I'm dumb, I guess I'm like any foolish man. And my head seems sort of foggy, cause you're mine. And of course, he loved his Elvis, right? You guys know it, you've heard it. Or you want to walk in if I you can't come around when a police man's telephone don't be good to all the truth. Well, I don't know what I love. Baby, it's just you I'm thinking of. And then he played some old country. I called collect on the phone. Said you're on way home But it sounds like someone else is lying there Don't call me no more Don't you knock on my door It's a too late now and you know you'll never change But you're just a Coca-Cola cowboy You got an Eastwood smile Robert Redford hair And you, you want to cross my heart Like it was Texas And you taught me how to say I just don't care Then I'm gonna just take a minute and I'm gonna pass this little guitar over to my loving sister Vonda. I don't know about you guys. There's a few memories for me. Is that working for you guys? A little bit? Here's one that he loved to do. Well, I hear the train come rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Well, I'm stuck in folks and prison. I'm keeps dragging on. But the people keep moving all down the side. 
forget, Papa liked to have fun music. Like, when you're around Dad, you were, it was, it was, the music was jubilant, right? That's why I'm, I'm not playing too many of them. I'm we trying had to, not. We used to have to sing this before we went trick-or-treating. Yeah. <laughs> Ba 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 baran 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 you got me rocking in a row and rocking in a real baran ba 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 baran went to a dance looking for a man saw baran so I thought I'd take a chance and baran ba 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 baran ba baran ba ba Little Ann Murray, he used to sing that song at weddings. Lovely ball. Always remember the song they were playing the first time. We danced and I knew as we swayed to the music and held to each other. I fell in love with you. Could I have this dance for the rest of my life? Would you be? Every night And when we're together It feels so right So could I have this dance For the rest of my life Ooh. You guys might know this one, we got, got a little in the funner part of the night. Kalaju was a word named, he never went nowhere. Fell up and he made Orient to stone. Kalaju, yeah. Yesterday. Texas sky 
Well, I'll be bucking at the county fair Amarillo by morning Amarillo, I'll be there Yeah, he had lots We don't smoke marijuana Take our trips on LSD. We don't make our trips down on Main Street. I just got to read the words, sorry. But we like living right and being free. And I'm proud, proud to be an okay from Escobia. A place where in this square have a ball.
course, we gotta throw in some more Elvis. There's a whole full of money, full of show, free to get in and out, don't get going, don't you? Step on my blue suede shoes. Don't you step on your blue suede shoes. You can do what I think, over my blue suede shoes. You can knock me down, steal my car, rent my side from the old blue shop. I'm doing the thing that you wanna do, but I'll hardly half of my shoes. Step on my blue suede shoes. You know, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> he always did this song this way. of 1941, the war had just begun. The Germans had the battle, the biggest ship that sailed the biggest gun. Bismarck was the fastest ship that ever sailed the seas. On her legs were guns as big as spears, hills as big as trees. And we find the German battleship that's making such a fuss. We gotta sink the Bismarck, cause the world depends on us. We hit the decks of our boys and spin the guns around. Gotta find the Bismarck. Got her down. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know if you know, there's been many people that have played with that, but not like you and me, right? <laughs> Just Greg Wickberg, who's been gracious to help us out with space. Played years. Wade Redekop is in the crowd. There's anybody, Joe Lavas or Harry, God rest his soul. Um, Lillian Ferrano, you're just a gem, auntie, darling. Auntie, auntie. Auntie, my <laughs> auntie. This is, she's just a it's gem. It's a pleasure. And Uncle Bill's gonna, we're gonna play some music. Don't you dare worry, buddy. Oh, yeah. He's sitting there. I come from music family on both sides, like a clash of titans, boom, we're just. A, <laughs> and on the back here, who's gonna sing a very good song, you know? Took years to get him to sing. Right out of high school, Mr. Greg, Kelly, and Reed. I used to take Dad's truck. I wasn't even old enough to drive it. Don't tell anybody. Uh, Harold, that's you. you. Shh. Or I called you Harold. <laughs> Grant, sorry. Um, Mr. Reed Flown was out in Buffalo Lakes. I used to drive his truck out there, pick Reed up, come back into this old shop, hey, put some plywood down so we didn't have his grimy oil. And we'd practice. And I got Greg, he was in electric gold. And uh, we, played in the, we played in the shop until we were good enough for Hank. <laughs> and I guess one day we made it, because we, we said, come on, let's go do this thing. Because Harry got sick, and, and I don't know what happened there, but just the, the streams that you flow in, right? Anyway, I'm going to get Mr. Reed flown to graciously sing Peaceful Easy Feeling. skin so brown And I want to sleep with you in the desert tonight With a billion stars all around Cause I get a peaceful easy feeling And I know you won't let me down Cause I'm all A peaceful, easy feeling, and I know you won't let me down. Cause I'm already standing on the ground.
Get this feeling I may know of you As a lover and a friend This voice keeps whispering in my other ear Tells me I may never see you again Cause I get a peace me down Cause I'm all seen Church bells ring. 
You can hear Hank. Hank. By my roses, paper roses. Yeah, she sold me paper roses, baby. Give me strength. And the only cost is one dime. Give me Hank. By my That was his song, man. So I wrote a little tribute to my father. It's kind of reworded some of the things. I, I don't know who's going to do it. I don't see a lot of bands coming up anymore. Back in the day, there used to be 10 or 12 bands. And you go to a dance and you have fun. And you go to the next week and you go there. And the next week and you go there. Dad lived that life. He went here, he went there. He, he, he touched hearts all around this country by playing music. Through, the music was the vehicle. You know, this whole world is full of singers, if you are chosen to tear your heart out when they sing, imagine life without them. Papa Hank, my hero, now he's the outlaw that walks through all my dreams, no, there'll never be another Hank McDermott, man in black, full sum prison blues. Yogi from Skokie. Hello, darling. Lord, I wonder who's going to fill his shoes. Silver Chevy rolling through the night. Oh, who's gonna fill his shoes? Who's gonna stand that tall? Who's gonna play the opera in the Wabash Cannonball? Who's gonna give their heart and soul to get to me and you? Lord, I wonder. Who's gonna fill his shoes? Lord, I wonder who's gonna fill his shoes? 
Well done. Well done. I believe that concludes the musical portion. There's going to be some more music a little bit later, but we got my brother and Matt. Matt and them guys have been working tirelessly back here. They're, they're doing a great job back there, doing sound, doing putting pictures together. It takes a lot. You guys have already been. Some of you may have been through this at some point in time. But it, it's quite, a, quite an undertaking, plus the emotional portion of it. Um, I'm going to get... Um, the tribute, is that what we're doing next on the program? I think it's the video. Barry's the, video. the Barry's video, I believe, yeah. We belong together, I'll always love you. We'll love each other day by day. And when the time comes to leave the sore. We won't be long here anymore. We'll be long to a higher, bright, shining universe. We'll always be to the maker of man. We're now changing the world for a better place Where war and conflict don't belong anymore We belong to a higher, bright, shining universe Always belong to the maker of man. Late at night, we'll watch the stars go by. We belong together, you and I. Living in this bright, shining universe. We'll always belong together, you and I. A higher, bright, shining universe will always belong to the maker of mine. We're now changing the world for a better place. belong anymore We'll belong to a higher bright shining universe We'll always belong to the maker of mine 
to the maker of mine. Steel black blue. You could 
Billy was an outlaw from the famous Blue Hill Gang. From his saddle hung a Winchester. From his hips there hung two. His hat was black and dusty from the storms that he'd been through. You could tell he was an outlaw from the fight. He rode into a small town, his eyes were piercing red. Stepped up to the bar, said, give me a whiskey or two. You could tell he was an outlaw from the fight. Boot Hill Gang Boot Hill Gang You could tell he was an outlaw from the famous Boot Hill Gang Yes, a gunfight was a sure thing in the year of 52 Yeah, the man of the silver star and the outlaw at the bar. Boot Hill Gang. Boot Hill Gang. You could tell he was an outlaw from the bank. The silver star was quick as lightning. Now there's another outlaw in the booth. Boot Hill Gang. Boot Hill Gang. There's another outlaw.
trouble with those steps. We ain't none of us young anymore. Hello, Kelly. Thank you. Watching that video reminded me once again of one of the main, well, not the main reason, but one of the reasons that I had a special rapport with Henry, Hank, him. He's one of the very few cousins on either side of my family who, as he got older, as I did, rounded out really well. I always felt very comfortable with him. I think I would have anyway if he was skinny, but it was nice for me. It's my job to wrap this up for us today. We're going to miss Henry so much. But we're so blessed that the gift of his music lives on, as was made so evident today in, in his children and in his friends. And I'd be willing to bet in his grandchildren, too. Looking forward to hearing them someday soon. I'm going to read a prayer to close the service. And then after that, I have one more poem, if you'll bear with me, I would like to read to just finish it off. So let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one family, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to this whole family, in heaven and on earth, your light and your peace. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. We thank you for Henry, who was so dear to us and who is now being taken from us. We thank you for the love he offered and received while he was with us here on earth. We pray that nothing good in his life will be lost, but will be of benefit to the world and that all that was important to him will be respected by those who follow, and that everything in which he was great will continue to mean much to us now that he's gone. May you, Lord, grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Grant us grace to entrust Henry to your never-failing love. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor that you bear your people. Amen. I'll read the poem now, and at the end of that will be your signal that the service is over. Um, we are asked to join the family and, and friends for lunch in this building somewhere that we'll probably find out before long. This poem made me think of what the couple of, final couple of weeks must have been like for Henry. He was getting so tired, and he was still fighting but he was getting really tired of fighting. I hope I can get through this. This is called, May I Go Now. May I go now? Do you think the time is right? May I say goodbye to pain-filled days and endless lonely nights? I've lived my life and done my best, an example tried to be. So can I take that step beyond and set my spirit free? I didn't want to go at first. I fought with all my might. But something seems to draw me now to a warm and loving light. I want to go. I really do. It's difficult to stay. But I'll try as best I can to live just one more day, to give you time to care for me, 
and share your love and fears. I know you're sad and afraid because I can see your tears. But I'll not be far, I promise that, and hope you'll always know that my spirit will be close to you wherever you may go. Thank you so for loving me. You know I love you too. And that's why it's hard to say goodbye and end this life with you. So hold me now just one more time and let me hear you say, because you care for me so much, you'll let me go today. Yes, and I still 